I once gave a talk in, in, a, in a poor area in Brazil, and I was talking about how the dinosaurs um, got um, annihilated by a, an asteroid 65 million years ago, and I explained that these are just the works of nature, and one person, very humble person said, are you trying to even take God away from us? And that to me summarized the whole thing, you know, that basically that is how most people see the role of science, that the more you understand about the world, the less God becomes important, and hence, you know, they're enemies, science and religion are enemies. And there are many, many of my colleagues that like, actually thrive, precisely creating this polarization between science and religion. Maybe they just turn on the valve just on purpose, because, but, <laughs> but the point is, is that that vision that I just gave you, that the universe is expanding and we are very small, is actually not the vision that I think about. Because when I think about, I look at the universe as an expanding thing, yes, but I look at our planet in comparison with other planets, and I realize that the Earth is a very, very special place. You look at other planets in the solar system, and they may be very fascinating, but they are barren worlds. There is nothing there. If there was something in Mars, it was a very long time ago. If there is something now, it's going to be underground and very simple. They are not building radio telescopes or plasma fusion machines. So as you move outwards and you look at other planets in other stars, just like Giordano Bruno said there would be, in fact now we know there are planets in other stars, and you learn about life here on Earth and how life here on Earth evolved, you realize something quite amazing, that life may exist in other places in the universe, it probably does, but in most probability it's going to be quite simple. Multicellular life, even sponge-like, not talking mammals here, multicellular life is going to be rare, and intelligent life is going to be extremely rare for many, many reasons that you can ask me afterwards. So as you look at this again, you look at the Earth and how rare our planet is, and amongst the animals that inhabit this planet, how we fit into this picture being this animated dust that can actually reflect about who we are and ask these profound questions about existence, and you start realizing that we are actually very special. That actually what modern science is teaching us is that humanity plays indeed a very central role in the universe, because we are, as far as we know, and until we find aliens that can think about who they are, which I think is a very far-fetched idea, even if they exist, we're never going to know about it, or if not never, for a very long time. So for the next few decades that we are here, we are alone, and we are the things that can think about the universe. You know, Anaxagoras used to say that um, man is the measure of all things. I don't know if we are the measure of all things, but we are the things that can measure. And so we are the things that actually can ask these questions. And one of the things we realize is how life is important, how life is sacred, and our role now as the thinking beings of this universe is to preserve the planet as we are. So to me, that is what's restoring our humanity in the present time. It's not because we are the center of the universe, it's not because we are made in God's image, but it's because we are the species of animated dust that can actually think and understand our cosmic importance. The difficulty is that science gives us no justification of justice, and it doesn't provide any morality to morals. Transcendent meaning can't be obtained by some kind of bootstrapping process up from the laws of physics. Humans are indeed complex. It's possible that we, that we are very unusual, and it's possible we are even unique in the universe. As, as Marcelo has said. And I think that these traits of complexity and, and so forth um, are suggestive that there's more going on here uh, than is encompassed by the scientific worldview. But, and I think here we might differ, okay, complexity and uniqueness don't of themselves convey transcendence. They don't provide meaning. Followers of Jesus think that loving relationships not individual freedom is the highest moral authority. 
In fact, we believe, paradoxically perhaps, that true freedom is found only in service to God and to our neighbor. And Christians express this by saying, Jesus is Lord, by which we are affirming that our own individual preferences are subject to a higher authority than our own, uh, and even than societies. That our individual preferences are subject to that outside authority which is found in a loving relationship with God. Now, Christians don't claim always to be able to live up to their ideals and aspirations. But having ideals and aspirations is not hypocrisy. Indeed, it is the heart of the Christian message that, that is aimed with what I would call kind of earthy realism, um, precisely at the fact that humans fail to live up to their aspirations. So we can see around us, Christians or non-Christians alike, that all is not love. There is much pain. Uh, an alienation, anger, strife, and war. The heart of Christianity is the message that God has done something utterly unexpected to address suffering and evil. Christians believe that God has entered into the experience of his creatures in the person of a human, Jesus. He has taken upon himself the suffering and alienation of the world and at enormous cost overcome it. We believe that this stupendous act took place in history, climaxing in the public torture and death of Jesus, in the view of practically the whole population of a small country. Um, and we believe this isn't just some impersonal asymmetry in the laws of physics, a tear at the edge of creation, if I may borrow a quotation from Marcella's book. We think it's more than that. We think it's actually a tear in the very heart of the creator. For more information about the Veritas Forum, including additional recordings and a calendar of upcoming events, please visit our website at veritas.org.